I'm very happy to welcome you to our session um, tonight, which is about the history of urbanization in Turkey and concentrating on two cities, which is Istanbul and Mersin. And we have two fabulous um, anthropologists and urbanists here, um, Ayşe Çavdar and Bediz Yilmaz, who have been able to join the Ring for Lezong on Critical Turkish Studies um, tonight. I would like to start um, with, by introducing you to Ayşe Çavdar, which many of you might know in the meantime because she also started teaching here. Um, she's a, right now, she's a fellow at the Kita Hamburger Kolleg in Duisburg, um, and she will continue to be a fellow there until um, the, at least the beginning of next year. So very happy congratulations for getting um, that fellowship continued. And um, Ayşe Çavdar is a cultural anthropologist. She studied... Um, first journalism, and you might all know her from, because she's a prominent journalist, you might know her from her, um, uh, from, from, from the media, and she also continues to appear on TV. Um, she uh, received her Bachelor of Arts in Journalism from Ankara University, continued on um, to do her Master's in History at Boazice University, with a thesis on baptizing territory constituting Rumelia after 1878, and then decided to pursue a PhD in cultural anthropology at the European University of Viadrina. And her thesis is called Loss of Modesty, the Adventure of a Muslim Family from a Mahalle to a Gated communi Community. Um, part of her thesis, I think, or the outcome of her thesis will be the topic of her talk today. Um, she has been a fellow at different places, um, now at the Kita Hamburger Kolleg, but before that she was a fellow um, at a project that's called Reconfiguration, um, History, Memory and Transformation. She's been a visiting fellow at the Zentrum Moderne Orient in Berlin, um, like some of our speakers in our Ringvorlesung, and was also um, a fellow at Global Prayers a Project in Berlin, a Berlin-based project. Um, that she was part of um, for a number of years, from 2009 and 2013. Her research and teaching interests are anthropology of religion, urban studies, cultural and social anthropology, history of Turkey, media and communication studies. And I was um, very lucky to listen to her talk yesterday. She gave a lecture at the Kita Hamburger Kolleg in Duisburg, which is about her new book project on um, um, Islamism and nationalism, um, but the talk today is called What Did Urban Transformation Change? So please welcome Ashi Chaldar first and then later on we'll hear Bidiz Yilmaz. Um, uh, I will tell a story. Today I will tell a story starting in Shunak and it will end in Shunak, although it is all about Istanbul and what happened uh, to Istanbul uh, during uh, the urban transformation uh, conquest, let's say, uh, under the AKP uh, rule let's, uh, in, in last 15 years. Um, and Instead of giving the numbers and information and so on, I will try to make you feel what happened in Turkey, what happened in Istanbul, in the cities of uh, Turkey, how the political atmosphere changed and how uh, the change in the political atmosphere is partly, for me, mostly uh, about uh, the change in the urban landscape, in the social and economic and also physical landscape of Turkey. This picture, uh, another thing I want to say um, uh, about my stay in uh, Germany, when I, uh, I, I came to Germany last time, I mean, uh, it was uh, last year, almost one year ago in June, and it, uh, the, the coup d'etat was not ha happening. And, uh, coup d'etat was not there at all. Uh, in Marburg, there is a coffee house, Elias Place. And then after the, after the coup d'etat, uh, the owner of the Elias, Gülşen, visited Turkey and came back. And she told me, I hate Germany because they are telling many bad stories about Turkey, which is not true. 
I just came from Turkey and everything is good, everything is fine. We have the roads, we have the places, we have the shops, we have the cafe houses and so on. Everything is fine, but Germans don't like Turkey and because of that they are all uh, telling bad stories. I got very upset because it was impossible to tell Gülşen what's happening in Turkey. And now this speech uh, I'm making to you is the speech uh, I wanted to uh, make to Yushan, but she uh, she couldn't she wouldn't listen to me at that time. So it is like kind of for me it's a kind of compensation of that never happened speech. So this picture is from Shirnak, 1992. Uh, for me, from my approach, uh, the story of urban transformation in the big cities, not only in Istanbul, Ankara, Izmir, Adana, partly Antalya, uh, started in the 1990s with the forced migration of the Kurdish population from the Kurdish cities uh, and villages. It is a, I don't know the name of the village because I just uh, made a Google search about what happened in 19... Uh, uh, Google search with Zorunlu Göç forced migration, and this is the first picture. So in 1990s, part of the, as part of the uh, struggle against terror in uh, southeastern Anatolia, I will go there, uh, Anatolia, the, the state uh, started to burn and destroy the uh, villages. It was because they were telling, that the army was saying, also the politicians were saying, uh, okay, uh, those Kurdish villages are uh, supporting the PKK, so if we are struggling against the PKK, we have to cut the support out, then let's destroy them. So it was a forced migration. So it was like uh, around 2 million people uh, in uh, almost 5, 6 years left their villages and towns and had, had to find uh, their places in uh, Istanbul, in Ankara, in Adana, in big cities. Uh, also in Diyarbakir, I mean, you know, the, the, uh, some of the families ended their, uh, ended their migration just in the neighboring bigger, bigger city, Diyarbakir, Urfa, Maidin. So all the structure of the cities changed. All the social landscape, political landscape changed. Especially economically, it was a very bad situation because, you know, this, the, especially those uh, southeastern cities were not rich, so they, they didn't have enough resources. So the, the, uh, the migration uh, never ended. And in Turkey, in, in Istanbul, we'll go back to Istanbul. In Istanbul, it, uh, it also changed all the urban plans and so on. Because suddenly you are getting thousands of families want to stay in, in a big city. So what they did, it is a traditional, let's say, uh, housing policy of Turkey. Uh, the big cities let people uh, build their gecekondus. I'm sure you know what is gecekondu. Gecekondu is the house uh, landed in one night. So it is illegal, but according to the law in Turkey, if a uh, uh, house is built only one night, and if the municipality uh, could uh, detect that house is built right after, the, right, right after it ended, then legally, yes, you can, live in, in, uh, you can live in that house, but it is like your house is never secure. It's like, uh, okay, anytime somebody can come and destroy your house. You cannot do anything because you are illegal, but you are, a little, you are just ignored. You, know, you are just ignored by the laws. By the, so you are not secure there. So those people were not secure in their villages and they lost the security also. They didn't have the security also in Istanbul. When they... Oh, why? Huh. This is one of the uh, one of the neighborhoods in Ayaz in Küçükçekmece. It is called Ayazma. If it is its name is Ayazma, I can say in the very old times it was a garden for a church you know, because Ayazma means a church with uh, a holy water. So you know, if the neighborhood is Ayazma, yes, it was. But uh, yeah, it became a Gecekondu neighborhood. In 1992, uh, the first Gecekondu happened. Most of the people 
uh, were living in Ayaz Mawar uh, came from that Shirnak. You saw the picture, one of the a picture of one of the villages. But of course, you know, it was not planned by the municipality. In 1994, uh, Tayyip Erdogan became the mayor uh, of Istanbul, and it, in 1990s for Turkey, it was a kind of uneasy period. Yes, there, there was a there was a war in the southeastern Turkey, but at the end. Uh, at the, at the same time, Turkey was struggling to be part of European Union, and it was not only a political project, it was also a kind of social project. So Turkey decided to uh, uh, part, contest for the Olympic Games. Yeah. And in 1992, they started a project. You know, in, in the meantime, with Ayazma, they started to make a project. Uh, no, I didn't have this. Uh, make an Olympic stadium in uh, Ayazma in the in the same place. So, uh, but those people because they they had to survive were faster than the municipality. So they did their houses instead of the Olympic stadium. The Olympic stadium started, but it uh, started as a project. But the, the houses, the, the uh, gecekongs were more much more faster than them. So it ha- it started like this. Uh, and then. Uh, yeah, in between there are some missing pictures. I didn't put them. Um, Tayyip Erdogan became the mayor, and in 1997, uh, left the people in Istanbul, also a chamber of architects, chamber of urban planners, and so on. Everybody started to make some organizations, not against Gece Kondus, of course, but against Olympic Stadium. You know, because they said in everywhere, in all the big cities of the world, wherever those Olympic Games uh, went, the people suffered. So especially this place, Ayazma, you are planning to put this stupid uh, Olympic Stadium, uh, is already inhabited by poor people. So if you want to, if you insist to build that stadium, then you have to suffer those people. And they are already suffered. And Tayyip Erdogan was so angry. Think of that. Even he was, uh, he was uh, when he was mayor, he was an angry man. Uh, so, uh, but you know, he didn't stop. Uh, he didn't stop the Olympic Stadium, and he didn't have enough power to stop this Gecekondu uh, neighborhood. So it uh, got bigger and bigger and bigger. In 1999. Something happened in Turkey, uh, one of the biggest um, earthquakes of history, and all the mega projects ended. So that was a very bad news for all Turkey and Marmara region, but it was a good news for Ayazma people because thanks to that, the stadium project stopped for a while. For a while. However, uh, after Tayyip Erdogan became uh, became uh, the prime minister, of course, you know, Istanbul is his biggest love. So he wanted to give a gift uh, to his biggest love. It was, again, you know, one of the gifts, I should say. He, he, made, he, he uh, made many gifts to Istanbul, but one of them was Olympic Stadium. Uh, just a sign of his love affair. Uh, and of course, to be able to make this stadium, he should, uh, he should uh, destroy the neighborhood, the Ayazma neighborhood. I'm talking all about Ayazma, but I'm not mentioning Tepeüstü. Tepeüstü is the neighboring uh, neighborhood of Ayazma, and it was not inhabited by Kurds. It was inhabited by Rize people. So they are the Hemşehris. They are coming from the same city, uh, with Tayyip Erdogan. Uh, I'm not talking about Rize people because in the first moment of the project uh, under the AKP rule, I mean, after, after 2002, as soon as the project started to be talked, Rize people collaborated. Tepe used to collaborate. They said, okay, destroy our houses, give us money. Yeah, because their networks are better in, in Istanbul. They have better networks, better, better solidarity networks, better trade networks, and so on. But those people are not like this, you know, Ayazma people. They, they were coming from uh, Kurdish region. 
they were already uh, segregated uh, by, by not only the state, but also the city because of that they are there. And they don't have any, anything, they don't have any place to go back because their villages are destroyed. Rize people, you know, th- those Rize people has their, uh, have their uh, secondary houses in some other places, at least in their, uh, in their hometown, so they, uh, they accumulated enough money to go back so they have better uh, connection with the uh, government and so on. So they, they, uh, they got what they want. But for uh, Ayazma people, it was, not impos- it was not possible. So what happened, again, these are the, these are the destruction pictures. Where, huh, this. <laughs> so... Uh, I cannot describe what I saw there, you know, for days. I was there not as an ethnographer or as a researcher. I was there as, a, as an activist because the Ayazma people were struggling against the police, against the municipality and so on. And as an activist, I was bringing all the journalists there, see what they are doing then. There and then, you know, after it appeared on MTV, for example, for two days they were they were okay. You know, nobody was attacking. And right after the cameras leave the country, they were coming back again to de- to destroy the families and so on. They insisted a lot. You know, there was uh, 200 families, almost 200 families lost their houses, but 17 uh, families said, "Okay, we are not going anywhere." One of them is Osman Abi, Osman Özdemir. I will uh, show his picture, and you will be very surprised, actually. Uh, Osman Abi said, no, I'm not going anywhere. I will be here. I will be staying here. This is my home. I made this home with my hands, you know. And um, he didn't go. Instead, it was, it, was, uh, it was really fantastic how he survived with his and neighbors and so on. The, the ruins of the house was there already. He used the ruins of the house to make another house on top of the ruins, you know. So with his kids, he was living there. Um, and Olympic Stadium, while Ayazma was falling down, the Olympic Stadium was raising this. And I will never forgive you too, because they made a concert there. And then, uh, yeah, uh, in 2004, Aziz Yeni Ay uh, became the mayor of Küçükçek Mece, and everything, uh, everything accelerated uh, in this way. And then in 2005, uh, the, the Olympic Stadium ended, but of course, you put an Olympic Stadium in the middle of nowhere. Ayazma people didn't have highways or roads or, or something like that. You know, they were. You had to uh, to be able to reach the uh, closest, nearest uh, public transportation from Ayazma. You had to um, walk in in floods, in, on on um, you know chamur in yeah in in mud for twenty uh, minutes, for example, and then you get. Uh, a small street, and then you know you can go to your job and so on. Of course, they didn't have this kind of services. But for Olympic Stadium, we needed public transportation and services. So Tayyip Erdogan said, "Okay, um, it was the last period of Ayazma. Okay, now uh, they were with." Uh, Olympic Stadium, but now we will build highways. Then, for now, you know, it's for sure we have to destroy this neighborhood. And it was the last attack, you know. Again, I don't have any word what happened to describe what happened there. It is like, you know, it is 16 families with their kids, and the police were caught. Catching the uh, catching the kids and the mothers were uh, trying to protect their kids while the fathers were arrested. You know, it was like I wish none of you uh, 
can see something like that, has to see something like that. You know, it is, it is really, it is then. It was worse than 1919, uh, 1999 earthquake, I should say. Oh, yes, after the highway, yes, the, the, the uh, Ayazma destroyed. And then uh, the highway uh, built, uh, you see highways. And then suddenly we heard the news that famous Ali Aoulu started a project, a housing project there. The name of the project is beautiful, you will love it. It is My World Aoulu. It is My World Aoulu, sorry, it's not My World Aoulu, My World Europe. So it's like, you know, it, the, the whole project is promoted European type of housing project serving to people. Then, uh, which people we don't know, people is really vague uh, word. So it started, and just in two years, they, they sold it uh, out. And I'm sure, do you know anything about Ali Aoulu? Ali Aoulu? Is there anybody? Is there anybody don't know anything about Ali Aoulu? He is now one of the richest guys of Turkey. Uh, he's, uh, you know, I, I remember him first of all with the earthquake, 1999 earthquake, because he appeared in the news media and he started to tell these kind of stories. Hey guys, all Istanbul will be destroyed with another. Uh, with another earthquake, because as the representative of Mutais constructors, I am saying we built all Istanbul in a wrong way. He told us. He said, because of the houses we built, people will die in an earthquake. This is his price. He is awarded by the state because he did it. He, he said. So, you know, the, the, the whole project was like that, you know, the, the, what Ali Al represents, like, um, an earthquake is coming, then we should uh, make everything, uh, all the houses of Istanbul uh, suitable with the earthquake, you know. Then for this reason, we should destroy all Istanbul to build it up again. You know, it was, it, it is the, so what. Turkey did what the what government did uh, for this reason to, to apply this project. It's a very beneficial project for everybody, they say. For everybody, everybody is again in question mark. Uh, it's like um, they, made a, uh, they made a law. It was 2006, I think, the disaster law. Uh, we call it disaster law. No, it was 2008, the disaster law. Uh, the, the, we call it disaster law, but it is uh, the, the, uh, the uh, old name, the complete name of the law is like um, the, the uh, re renovation, renovation for those places under the earthquake risk. So it is like a preemptive war. Do you know what is preemptive war? Uh, the United States made in Iraq, you know, the Iraq will, uh, Bush was saying, Saddam will uh, attack us, so before he attack us, we should attack them, you know, then we will destroy a potential enemy. So there is a potential earthquake, and there will be potential deaths, and before, we should, the potential destruction, so we should destroy ourselves, not to make this more risky. So the, the disaster protection law became a disaster itself. You know, it, it generated a kind of state-made disaster and, uh, and destroyed uh, two million houses since 2006. Two million houses. I'm not joking and not exaggerating. So it was the, it was the thing. Now... I want uh, you to think about a couple of words. One of them is crime. What is a crime? You know, what, you know, what, 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 what should be a crime? I, in here, I will, I will 
uh, make a break about talking about uh, talking about these places and Aliyah lands. Uh, so and I will be talking about a little bit Gece Kondu. My father was building Gece Kondus uh, when I was a kid because he was a, pri a primary school teacher. But of course, the wage was not enough to feed five kids. So he was, during the summers, he, we were coming back to Ankara and he was uh, building Gece Kondus in one night. So uh, during my childhood, Gece Kondu places, the construction of Gece Kondu, Gece Kondus were my playground. I was helping to my father to, to build. It was not me, only me, helping to my father. Because Gece Kondu is a kind of communal project. Because <clears throat> if somebody will make a Gece Kondu near to you, First of all, you have to ignore what he's doing because it is a crime, you know, according to public law. Because for Gece Kondu, maybe you are using the public land. Maybe it is not public land, but you don't have the permissions to build a Gece Kondu up. So your potential neighbors have to ignore you if you want to continue with your... But it is not only ignoring, they, have, they need to help you to build it. So any Gece Kondu in a Gece Kondu house is a communal project. So it is a common project. It is a common place. A Gece Kondu is not a private house in that sense. Yes, inside is the Gece Inside, you know, after, after uh, it, is, uh, it is built up, of course, it has some privacy. But it is not the privacy those flats are providing. You have... A, Garden, for example, and gardens, yes, you put some walls around the garden, but those gardens in Gece Kondu neighborhoods are not to separate the family from the, from the remaining of the neighborhood. Vice versa, the gardens, the, the walls of gardens, put those Gece Kondu people together because I remember in those Gece Kondu neighborhoods, in, in the Gece Kondu neighborhoods I grew up, we were getting our Aichichi, Aichichi, I Yes, and then eating uh, on sitting uh, on the wall, and it was it was our public space. That wall was our public space. Think of that. Could you have that sort of public space around it? So we were criminals. You know, all the neighborhood was criminal in that se in that sense. But that crime was putting us together. Yeah. Oh, okay. In here. The crime belongs to the belongs to Aya Aulu because afterwards it turns out that he didn't have uh, enough permissions, and the uh, shareholder the, the uh, shareholder of that crime is not us, even not the not the uh, owners of those flats. The shareholder of that crime is state. So by this way, the the. Uh, State is, you know, in the Gece Kondu, by ignoring people, state uh, makes a choice uh, about which crime it will be uh, sharing and with whom it will be sharing that crime, you know. In Gece Kondu, it is the neighborhood. Who is the shareholder of this crime here? I will not answer. Uh, the people of Ayazma, some of uh, the people of Ayazma went this Bezirgan Bahçe place. It is horrible. In the Q&A session, I will tell what is Ayazma, if you wonder. But I should say they lost each other. After three months, if you cannot, because you have to buy this. It is not a free house. You have to buy these houses. And for buying these houses, you have to be in debt for 15 years, at least 15 years. And if you cannot pay three shares, three months shares, then you are losing your house also. Most of them are not living there. Several times I uh, visited Bezirgan Bahçe, never I could find the same family I visited before. Each time, somebody was losing their places. And now, uh, Turkish airlines, the uh, hostesses of Turkish airlines are mostly living because it's very close to uh, the airport, Atatürk airport. And this is the other place, uh, Kaya Shehir. The last 16 family they denied to leave Ayazma went there. It is a place 50 kilometers 
distant from the city center. Those, place, those people cannot live there if they are getting uh, the, the uh, minimum wage. It is, it is iftar. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, for, the, for the sake of this month, I put this, yeah, be, because I don't have time now. I consumed all my time. I'm not uh, explaining everything, but, you know, it's because um, this is Ramazan. I put this Ramazan picture. So there you are part of, the, it was this thing, I would say, you know, in, uh, in Gejokonda house, you make these kind of things in your, uh, in your uh, garden with your neighbors, you know. But here you are only the crowd. You are the picture. No? If you are living there, you are just a picture, part of picture. You cannot, you cannot know all those people living there because in uh, Ayazma it was just 200 families. So they can, they they shared their stories and also they shared their spaces, and they were sharing what they eat. Here, uh, the uh, iftar food is not coming from the houses. It is coming from municipality. And I think it's not a good thing. Yes, this is Tayyip Erdogan's choice. On the right, Osman Özdemir. You see that the wife of Osman, Osman is a religious person. So I'm just saying, you know, it's not because Osman is not religious. It's not because Osman is Kurdish. It's not because political reasons. Because like Osman-like family, he is, he is visiting to give a picture, but in fact, he made the choice for Ali Aalu. I said many people, it is ending now. I said many people lost their houses in Bezirgan Bahçe too. You know, it was provided by the state. And, you know, it was like, in theory, they should live there and then, you know, they would have modern houses in... Not fancy apartments, um, but they couldn't afford. What happened? They went back. Some of them went back to their cities. Osman Abi is still trying to survive in Kayashehir, but many of his neighbors went to Shunak. And look, what happened in Shunak recently? This is Shunak. Now, it is being destroyed, like Sur in Diyarbakir, like Cizre. Now the government, like Hakkari, now the government made a decision. Shirnak will not be a city anymore. It will be a town again in, in the legal hierarchy. So it's like punished. So I'm ending here. Um, Bedis will tell another case and together we will uh, answer your questions. Thank you very much.